So in this video, I'm going to show you the best pull-up progression for beginners, and I can promise you it won't be like the other videos you have seen. I'm going to show you and get you to focus on the right exercises and how to progress and regress depending on your strength and fitness levels. This video will not only give you the tools to help you unlock the pull-up, but give you the information that will not just see you to your first unassisted pull-up, but multiple reps and sets. Before we get into that, if you're new here, my name is Lee. If you're interested in calisthenics or bodyweight fitness then hit that subscribe button hit the bell icon so you get notified of whenever i upload and if you find this video useful please tap the like button it helps spread this video to other people and if you have any questions or want to create a discussion please use the comment section down below with that out the way let's get into the video so you've clicked on this video because you want to be able to do pull-ups and I don't blame you. Pull-ups are awesome and one of my favorite exercises. Plus it's one of the best exercises for your back and bicep. And there's something just primal about the pull-up. Like we were born to pull ourselves up and would make sense if we really did come from apes. The problem is, with our daily lives, many of us rarely use our back muscles or pull ourselves up anything. So we have lost that natural strength. And it's why so many people struggle to even do one pull up. So you are not alone in this. But after this video, you will have the tools and the knowledge to be able to unlock that natural strength locked in your DNA. So let's look at the progressions or the tools to get you there. Many other videos on this topic will focus on eccentrics or negatives and using a band. And although they are useful tools, I will go into that later in the video. I do not think they should take up all of your focus or should be used at the start. There is an exercise that you should focus on and I will show you how you can progress and regress that so you can start using it right after you've watched this video. Can you guess what it is? It's an exercise that I promote a lot on this channel and it should be used even if you can do a pull-up as it is a great exercise on its own and should not just be used for progressions for pull-ups. So this exercise is the inverted row. The inverted row is a fantastic exercise and one I recommend all the time besides learning the pull-up as it is a great back builder and it has so many ways to make it easier and harder. But in today's video, I want to highlight why it will help you to be able to do the pull-up. The muscles used in the pull-up are used in the inverted row. They may differ in how much one muscle works in one move to the other, but by doing inverted rows, you are building and strengthening muscles you will use in the pull-up. Plus, they work a very underused and often neglected muscle, the rhomboids and the mid-lower traps. Why I bring this up is due to lifestyles, mainly posture, these muscles are often overstretched and weak, and it's no wonder why so many people can't even do a pull-up. A massive underlying point that will be in this video is to build a strong foundation and don't rush the process. Don't make the goal the only thing to chase. Focus on getting strong and stable and executing perfect form and build a foundation that will be able to get you to your first pull up and progress much further. Rush and you increase the risk of injury or never doing a pull up or not getting past doing a couple. So listen to the points I talk about and don't rush it. Enjoy the journey and rinse as much gains as you can in each step. I would recommend doing the inverted rows on rings or a suspension trainer, ideally one with two anchor points. If you don't have a pair, get yourself some and ideally ones with numbered straps. The reason why the numbered straps will be handy is because you're able to track progressions a lot easier because you can then track the height of the rings much easier especially if you have a log book you can say this week i'm doing it on strap number four i'm doing it on five or i'm doing it on six or i'm doing it on seven it's going to make it a lot easier for you to recreate each session what height you have those rings for the particular progression that you're on so i would recommend numbered straps i will leave some links to some down below there are ones from pull up and dip that are really really good um, and if you use my code lee 10 you will actually get yourself 10 percent off so check them out down below so the first session will be kind of a trial because first you need to find out the right angle for you this will be different for each person and don't worry what others are doing just focus on you so as you can see i'm doing inverted rows at an incline 
This is why inverted rows are so good. You can change the difficulty by the angle of your body. The more upright you are, the easier it is. And as you go lower down to the point where you are horizontal or under it, directly under the bar, this will be at the hardest. But don't worry, there are other things you can do at this point to make it even harder. So there are even more progressions to come. So what I recommend for you is to find the right angle where you are able to do three sets of eight to 12. Why that many? Well, since you are new to this, you need to be doing more reps because you need to learn the form. The more we do something, the better we get. So you need to be doing more reps. But don't worry, when you are strong enough, you will be doing lower rep work and you will get really strong. Secondly, you need to strengthen your connective tissue. Going too heavy too soon can lead to injuries to your tendons and ligaments. They get less blood supply than the muscles and are less elastic, so they need more time to adapt. So by doing more reps, you will allow them to get more blood supply and slowly build up and get stronger so why 8 to 12 well i'm glad you've asked basically you pick a progression you can do eight reps with then i want you to stay at that progression until you can do three sets of 12 with perfect form and not rushing or cheating range of motion to get there you will only cheat yourself if you rush once you can do three sets of 12 then move on to the next progression so what's the progression okay so i want you to pick an angle that you can do eight with once you can do three sets of 12 i want you to go lower down moving more towards a horizontal angle why is this harder well the more upright you are more of the weight is in your legs as you go more horizontal a higher percentage of the weight goes into your arms so you need to be stronger to be able to do the same exercise it's really that simple you're just playing with the proportion of your weight distributed between your legs and your arms and how much of the weight you need to pull with your back muscles okay so now you can do the full inverted row you are completely horizontal okay now what you can adjust the difficulty now with what you do with your legs have them bent which is easier have them out straight which is harder extend one leg at a time or lift one leg in the air the variables here are yours to play with to make the exercise easier or harder so play around with them find one you can do eight reps with stick with it until you can do three sets of 12 and then rinse and repeat keep trying to find a way to make the exercise harder while you're in this phase so what's next okay now we need to work more towards the pull-up the inverted row is great but compared to the pull-up there is less movement in the shoulder so we need to start strengthening our muscles using that range of motion so how do we do it jackknife pull-ups for any of you that have never seen these they are kind of a hybrid between the row and the pull-up and a way to get your legs to help you doing the pull-up form so as you can see you are now trying to increase the range of motion in the shoulder joint the arms are more overhead and you're trying to recreate what the pull-up would look like but by using your legs to help assist you so what's great about using the rings is that you can adjust the height to get the right angle of your body and you're able to play around and adapt how much of an assistance you get from your legs. Again, you can make this progressive by adjusting the angle of your body and putting yourself in a position so you can adjust how much of an assistance you get from your legs. Are they bent or are they straight? By doing them with straight legs, it means that your legs can't assist as much, plus you get the benefits of hitting your glutes and your hamstrings, so you're getting free gains. You can go even further by elevating your feet, meaning that your legs help even less, plus it gets you closer to that pull-up angle. You can even make the box higher to make it harder or vice versa. You have so many ways to keep making this progressively harder. And that's the key here. You need to create progressive overload to get progressively stronger and build more muscle. And all of these steps and tools are about how you can make your muscles and your body work harder to build up to what your overall goal, which is to be able to do the pull-up. At this point, you can play around with doing pull-ups from the ground and getting used to doing it with a slight assistance from your legs and then guess what you are nearly there so i'm guessing you are probably wondering what about bands and eccentrics or the negative pull-up well i wanted you to build a foundational strength before you start doing them 
At this point, you have built good core strength with your pulling muscles and you've strengthened your connective tissue and core. Plus, you know all the work you've done is over the three phases of the rep. The concentric or the lifting part, the transitional, the isometric part, and the sort of middle part of the rep, and the eccentric, which is the lowering portion. The next two styles will help you work towards the pull-up, but I didn't want you to start with them as you needed those skills in place before starting bands and negatives. I didn't want them to be your focus because you don't do all the work in the free phases and you needed the strength and stability and form to use them safely. Plus, you need to know progressive overload to know how to use bands and negatives progressively. So let's have a look at them now. So eccentrics are great. You are actually stronger in this phase than you are in the concentric part, which is the lifting phase. So they are great for pull-ups. So by jumping up and lowering yourself down, you are strengthening the muscles that you will be using in the pull-up while doing a portion of the range of motion, which is great and specific. The issue in this is that it can be hard on the body and it does more damage to the muscles. So you will find that you can't do this type of training too often as DOMS is very common. The issue with that is the pull-up is a skill and when you want to learn a skill you want to do it often to learn it quickly so this may be slowed down because of this eccentrics can be very damaging to the muscles or it has been shown it is more likely to cause doms and because of that reason the recovery time for that type of training does tend to be longer so instead of doing your eccentrics and maybe only doing it two maybe three times a week max if you were to do a different type of what I promoted in this video, you might be able to do this sort of pull-up training a lot more often every day or every couple of days. If you do eccentrics, they will limit the amount of times or how often you can do this form of training. So just be aware of that. The reason why I focus on the inverted row first is because if you are not strong enough, you will not be able to do these effectively. If you jump up and drop straight down because you are not strong enough, this exercise is going to be useless. This is what usually happens when people follow other recommendations on how to learn the pull up. So when you are doing eccentrics or negatives, the purpose of it is to increase the time of you lowering. So what you wanna do is to jump up and to lower yourself down. As you get stronger, you want to extend this time. Make sure that you pause at the top so you can increase the pause at the top time and then slowly lower yourself down. It's really that simple. As you get stronger, what you might be able to do is each time that you jump up, try focusing on actually pulling yourself up as opposed to just focusing on jumping up and then what you can do is as you progressively get stronger you will find that your back muscles will be doing more of the proportion of the concentric part as opposed to just jumping so you want to try and pay special attention to that so as you're pulling yourself up really focus on actually pulling yourself up to the bar and not just jumping as you get stronger put more and more of an emphasis of trying to pull yourself up and then again you can slowly lower yourself down once you get to the point where you can really focus on or it feels like you are doing most of the work and the jump is just sort of like the the beginning of it then again you can go back to just lowering yourself at a normal time because obviously that lowering of that eccentric part portion of the rep is more damaging to the muscle so you might be able to take them away and then you can start doing more jumping pull-ups and then you can start doing them more often because that sort of style of training isn't going to damage the muscles or is less likely to cause you doms so you can then do it more often the next step is using resistance bands. Resistance bands are great and they can be useful when doing pull-ups as they allow you to do a full range of motion and they replicate the form of the pull-up. This is important because learning the move and getting efficient at it and training the central nervous system is a huge part of strength. So it's great for that. If you get a set of resistance bands, and I recommend that you do, and I'll leave a link to some down below, but what you want is to get a set because a set comes with different strengths. And this is important because they will be your progressive overload. The largest or the thickest band is the strongest, and this will give you more assistance. Use the same practice that I said with the inverted row. 
pick a band that you can do eight reps with a full range of motion and good form and stick with that band until you're able to do three sets of 12. When this happens, move to a thinner, lighter band. Most sets have four or five bands, so you will have lots of progressions to go through. The key principle here is the band assists you and kind of takes away some of the weight from you. So as you get stronger, you, you will use a weaker band which will then take less of your weight until you are able to get to the point where you do not need a band anymore. So at that point it will be a congratulations, you are able to do a pull up unassisted. Be careful when using bands though because you do not want to bounce when using the bands because they have that kind of stretch reflex in them. If you get to that lower that lowered portion where you're full dead hang, if you're going down that thing and springing back up, you're not actually doing the work because the, the resistance band is stretching and pulling you up. So make sure that the whole time when you are using the bands, you are going under, you're under control and you're making sure that your muscles are doing the work and the bands are just assisting you and not doing the work, okay? And pay special attention, especially if you're wrapping around your knees or everywhere else, that they do not come loose and hit you in that area. So how long will this take? The answer is who knows, only you will know and what I recommend is you start right now but please don't compare your progress with others or how fast they got to a progression before you. This will only hurt your results and it will make you rush progressions that you are not ready for. This will increase the risk of injury or it will get you to the point where you rush a progression and then you get to a progression and you're stuck because you're not strong enough to do it or each progression takes you a lot longer because you were not ready for it you want to change your mindset and think okay I'm at this progression now how can I rinse all the gains before I need to progress on to the next one because if you have this process you will maybe take longer than someone else but you will actually probably build more muscle more strength and more control and you will actually get better at the actual exercise which is the key thing that we're looking for what I will say though is even if you're doing some of the other pull up uh, progressions, whether it's the eccentrics, whether it's the, the uh, band assisted ones or maybe even the jackknife ones, I do recommend still doing the inverted row, adding it in maybe as a complementary exercise just so you're able to keep a good amount of volume and workload done on those muscles and as you get stronger, um, your rowing will get better and that will transfer over to the pull up very very well so what i want to know guys is if you use this progression or you found it useful or it was able to help you do your first pull up please comment down in the section down below i'd love to know if this was able to help you um, if you did find this video useful please give it a thumbs up because it does help youtube to promote this and share it with other people i also would like it if you know anyone that this would help or someone has been stuck at the pull up share this video with them and if you like content like this make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know whenever I upload and I have done a video on the best push-up progression for beginners so if you want to learn how to do the push-up as well there will be a card up above or to the side and I'll leave a link to it down below uh, with that out of the way guys I will see you in the next video